glasses. He says, quote, Though the people knew in general that Captain Kidd was hanged and the crime was piracy, yet there were scarce any, even at the time, who were acquainted with his life or actions who could account for his turning into a pirate. So even uh, Charles Johnson thought Captain Kidd probably got a bad rap in 1724. So where does that take us? Well, that's the story that I wish Zach were here to tell. And uh, instead, we'll go to what we're going to talk, what our research is showing us. This is the island of Catalina, off the southeast corner of the uh, Dominican Republic. Uh, at Catalina Island, we know that Captain Kidd uh, put the vessel there in this little crook area, the lee of the island. Uh, he placed the vessel there in 1699 and went back to New York. He left it in the hands of a Henry Bolton, the merchant, and the merchant testified at Captain Kidd's trial that he took the vessel and moved it into the river. The nearby river sails the vessel into the river, and for about a month he tried to so-called protect the vessel, uh, but Bolton was pretty much described as pretty much a scoundrel himself, and then he started taking things off the ship. He had left 14 young boys and three old men is what uh, Kidd testified. He was in the river. Many things were taken off. Undoubtedly, the gold and the silver was taken off the vessel. There was cotton on board, and there was sugar on board, and there's Muslims. The things that Kidd could not take back on the San Antonio to New York, then the ship was set afire. And with the prevailing winds, the ship ended up, we surmise, going back to Catalina and wrecking this little crook here on the windward side of the island, which is not where you would leave a ship, but that's where Captain Kidd's quit a merchant, we feel, ultimately landed. Well, the vessel itself. As it burns, we know it was burning. There's a Dutch testimony that he's, a uh, Dutch sailor said he watched it burn for six hours. Uh, as it drifted, you would lose the upper rigging of the vessel. The deployed cannons, we know that Captain Kidd had maybe as many as 54 cannons. That was not only his French or his English cannons initially, but those cannons that he captured from the Quitta merchant. Now, some cannons were given away, and some, uh, there's two or four that he gave to a pirate, Culliford, which was brought up in his trial, and there's conflicting testimony. But let's just say that we have 50-some possible cannons. At the site, though, all the deployed cannons, those that would be in position to fire, were not there. That was the first thing I noted on the shipwreck site. This is a site of a ship loaded with cannons, but no deployed cannons. Now, that makes sense in the river area. You could very easily remove these cannons of the upper gun decks, take off anything of value that you could take away from the vessel, but then ultimately set it out adrift on fire. Those cannons in the hold, the leaky hold, just weren't pulled out. So what happens over time? We note the cargo, this being the bow, this being the stern of the ship, the cargo holds are here and there. Imagine that drawing I had earlier where you lower these cannons down in the two cargo holds, and when the ship deteriorates, what you end up with is a stacked set of cannons in the bow area, and a stacked set of cannons amidship, and then a few loose cannons that have tumbled, but virtually no wood or timbers. And we were quite uh, impressed by the fact that it was just none of the evidence we would expect to find on a uh, pristine shipwreck that would be in the sandy bottom, but this is a really hard pan area. So what we have, lots of waves crashing in, that hurricane we showed you, and the waves coming in. So the wood's all gone, and the question is, where are the spikes and the nails and the drift pins and all the things, the gudgeons and pintles and the, the, the items we would look for as archaeologists? Well, what we find is they're not really on the site or they may be buried. We produce our site plan again of the various items. Shallow water. I'm talking the top uh, brain coral on this site is in a foot and a half of water. When you go up with a boat, you can look down and see the cannons. Quite remarkable. But what we know has happened is these things have been washed away into the deeper water, or we've found sand pockets and uh, caverns into the iron shore that's eaten through with the wave action. So on our last trip in December, uh, with Dean Goodman and others and the graduate students. We went in and started looking in December to check out these other areas where there might be artifactual material. Uh, here's a photograph that Nicole took. Uh, I think it's the only one you're going to get credit for, Nicole. Uh, going through this iron shore wall that's been eaten out by the wave action and popping up inside Catalina Island with no overhead environment, what we find is sand pockets. So I like to think of this as kind of a washing machine. All the artifacts and sand and things go into the holes, get stirred around inside, but they can't really get back out of the holes, and they get deposited inside. Very quickly, with a little bit of hand fanning, we started finding ballast stones and indicative items from this shipwreck. Now, 
we're talking really a 30 minute investigation. But we're gonna concentrate our work coming up, not only at measuring the cannons, looking at the site, recovering two cannons of different lengths from opposite ends, but we also wanna look inside the area of the sand pockets to investigate uh, the possibility, which we think will be artifactual material. We we'll also wanna note, as a uh, long time diver and a preservation person, marine protected area specialist, on our first dive there, Francis and I were diving, and when we go underwater, we find our own anchor line going right through here and wrapping right down through all the nice corals. And we ended up having difficulty with uh, our own anchor with an automatic hoist. We got ready to leave. They just put it in gear and hoist up the anchor and pulled away the coral. So another mission is to work with our... Uh, 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 marine protected areas and geology people and our, we had a marine biology student here somewhere we'll introduce uh, that we're going to go in and put in a buoy system to protect the area, delineate it as a reserve first, put the boundaries which I believe are 300 meters Francis, yeah. 300 meters along the shoreline incorporated in the shore out to 300 meters which will get us into 600 feet of water and we're going to make that into an underwater reserve for scientific study put the mooring systems in, the markers on this, then we're gonna turn this into, after our, our research, into a preserve open for snorkelers and divers, or just stand on the shore and watch the site, for, uh, interpret these sites on shore. So we need to also respect the biology. This is one of the uh, dendrogyra corals that are beautiful coral stands that was knocked over, and I'm kind of placing it back up here. So uh, those of you that work with us on marine biology, we've already got some restoration work to do to put these corals, re-glue them back in position. It's important for science, we don't tear up the biology of the site uh, investigating the archaeology. Very pristine area, dendrogyra, cylindrous corals, uh, acroporia corals, which are now endangered species in the Florida Keys. Uh, I, I was amazed at the amount of corals and marine life on the site. It's going to be a pristine location for a marine protected area and for tourism, not only for Captain Kidd and the history, but for the fact that it's also got biological resources, and also more importantly, we feel that there's terrestrial and underwater components to this. Um, so the plan is to go back to the Dominican Republic starting in March. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we've talked with and meetings with the Museum of Dominican Man, the ONPCS. We've met with uh, the WAS University, one of the oldest in the Americas, and Dean Goodman will say more about this. I uh, met with the Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of Culture. So we're going to the government agencies that are, are going to be responsible for the land and underwater, the archaeological and biological components, with the idea being that we're going to make a park. Uh, this will be a series. This will be our third underwater marine protected area in Dominican Republic. Uh, we'll have the involvement. Uh, right now we've got students from the Individualized Majors Program. Of course, Overseas Studies Endorsement, Geological Science students will be with us. In the past, I see uh, people like Bill Jones from SPIA has been with us there. and uh, Bill Roof, I think, is here with uh, Biology, Tropical Biology Programs. And Earl and Claudia will be going with us. And with Kathy's list of uh, 16 more units, we hope that we'll increase the uh, involvement of more units in the college and of course in the School of uh, Health, Physical Education, Recreation. We're expanding out to get more involvement much beyond Captain Kidd. With that, I'll let uh, Dean Goodman make a few remarks on uh, where we're going for the future. Again, I'm going to keep my remarks rather brief because I want to see some of the artifacts that are here. Uh, good question. Uh, right outside the back door. Okay, they'll be right out the back door. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the parents for the community. You know, at the university... Okay, um, thank you. At the university, um, that's landlocked, it's rather amazing that we're doing underwater archaeology. And that's really a testament, a testimony to the kinds of things that IU is known for. Um, as a dean of a school, I just want to make sure we're involved in excellent work. One of the things I um, spoke to Charlie about when he talked to me initially about the Captain Kidd site and investing in this was, what other things can we do that would develop important and good relations with the Dominican Republic? And I suggested, because part of our mission is health and wellness, that it would be important for us to meet with um, key influential people. Uh, with Jeff Conrad's help, we not only met with Francis, but I met with the rector or the president of the university, 
senior people at the university. It's the Universidad 